Hey everyone, welcome to this psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about cohort studies. Cohort in research and statistics denote a group of individuals who share a characteristic at some specific time and who are then followed forward in time with data being collected at one or more suitable intervals. The cohort study design is the best available scientific method for measuring the effects of a suspected risk factor. As these are long-term studies, they are sometimes called as longitudinal studies. There are two types of cohort studies. They are forward-looking or prospective cohort study and backward-looking or retrospective cohort study. In the prospective study, a set of healthy people are taken into account and we observe them from the time they are getting exposed and measure the outcome of exposed and unexposed situations. Generally, prospective studies are planned in advance and carried out over a future period of time. In retrospective cohort study, we go back in time to get details from a group of similar person about when they were exposed and the similar people who were not exposed. In general, this type of study looks at data that already exists and tries to identify risk factors. Let us take a look at an example to understand this. A researcher might want to find if exposure to mobile phones for a long time might cause brain tumor. Now the researcher would have to take a group that is a cohort who doesn't have brain tumor and classify them as mobile phone users and non-mobile phone users and follow them up for a period of time. After some period of time, the researcher again has to observe which set of people have tumor that is the users who use mobile phone for a long period of time or those who use the mobile phone for a short period of time. We can use the risk ratio that is the ratio of the incidence of disease in the exposed group to the ratio of the incidence of the disease in the unexposed group. Relative risk quantifies the strength of an association between exposures and outcomes. If the relative risk is greater than 1, then the exposure increases the risk of the disease. If it is less than 1, then the exposure decreases the risk of disease. And if it is equal to 1, there is no difference in risk. This data suggests that people who use mobile phone for a long time or short time have tumor or no tumor. We term this data as A, B, C and D. To find the risk of developing tumor in exposed group, we use this formula and to find the risk of developing tumor in unexposed group, we use this formula. Now to calculate the risk ratio, we have to divide risk of developing tumor in the exposed group by the risk of developing tumor in the unexposed group that is 0.85 divided by 0.05 which gives us the risk ratio 17. This implies that people who use mobile phones often are 17 times more likely to get brain tumor from people who use mobile phones for lesser time. I hope you like this video. Please share these videos with everyone who are preparing for this exam. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.